war ein guter Ausblick, den du ganz am Ende gegeben hast, weil ich als erstes dachte, man müsste sozusagen fairerweise jetzt auch umgekehrt ein Interview mit dir machen. Ja. Aber ähm, ja, denn du verdienst es, aber... Äh, ja, das hat mich so lange gebraucht. Ja. <lacht> Machen also, wir irgendwann. Ja, also wie es ähm, der Zufall will, war heute ein 80-jähriger ähm, Techniker von Bosch hier, der in den 70er, 80er Jahren die für das Fernsehen die Matzmaschinen, also die Magnetaufzeichnungsmaschinen, gewartet hat. Wir haben eine davon nämlich im Medienarchäologischen Fundus wieder reaktiviert, mit Hilfe des jetzt inzwischen 80-jährigen Bernd Traub. Und er erzählte sofort, als ich fragte, hat er nicht noch ein bisschen Zeit, heute Abend den Vortrag zu hören, dass man damals eine Flüssigkeit hatte, mit der auf den zwei Zollbändern äh, sichtbar wurde, wo der Timecode sagte, hier, jetzt können wir schneiden. Also auf dem an sich unsichtbaren Magnetband, das doch sichtbar zu machen und dann musste man dann so halb streck schneiden. Das hat ja noch ganz lebhaft in Erinnerung. Was mich dazu bringt, zu denken, wäre natürlich schön, wenn man neben den Medien Künstlern und Künstlerinnen tatsächlich auch mal die, mal die, die Ingenieure selbst, also die auch in den Studios gearbeitet haben, fragen würden. Denn die hatten ja auch die Hands-on-Erfahrung, von der uns ja einige der Medienkünstler, Künstlerinnen auch sehr detailliert erzählt haben. Also dieses konkrete Interagieren mit dem Material. Und ähm, ja, und dann am Ende noch, ich habe es ja eingangs schon erwähnt, einmal haben wir es kurz gesehen äh, bei der japanischen Künstlerin, diese Maschinen selbst. Also äh, was waren das für Maschinen? Denn ich erinnere mich, äh, bei unserem allerersten Gespräch äh, hast du auch äh, versucht noch <lacht> zu sagen, du versuchst auch ein bisschen noch mit zu dokumentieren, was waren das eigentlich für Maschinen, mit denen wir gearbeitet haben. Also vielleicht Technikhistoriker wissen das, was das für Maschinen das sind. Aber man sieht jetzt diese wunderbaren Charaktere, äh, Künstler, Künstlerinnen, äh, die dann auch, man sieht sozusagen in deren innerlichen Bildern ablaufen, wie sie mit den Maschinen arbeiten, ja, sie erzählen. Das wäre vielleicht noch eine schöne Idee, wenn man tatsächlich noch ein bisschen mehr da noch von diesen Maschinenbildern selbst hineinschneiden könnte, um, um zu sagen. Also ich finde, die, die japanische ja, das, hat das wunderbar gezeigt. Sie nahmen ja dieses ja. Unangenehm, also nicht im Prozess, nicht in Aktion, aber ja. äh, in dem Moment, als sie dieses dieses Editing-Gerät in den, in den Händen hatte, lief bei ihr sozusagen der ganze Prozess der von der, wie sagt man jetzt schön, von der Erfordernis dieser Maschine herkommt, nämlich was, welche, wozu lädt diese Maschine auch ein? Also Medienkunst ist ja menschlich und unmenschlich zugleich. Also sie, sie, sie wurde ja plötzlich zum Subjekt der Maschine, als sie sagt, also jetzt kann ich auf diesen Knopf drücken und dann gibt das die Möglichkeit oder der andere kroatische Medienkünstler, der im Kopf plötzlich diese Mikrosekundenabläufe wieder hatte. Wäre schön, wenn man da ab und zu mal so ein Bild noch reinschneiden könnte, von diesen Maschinen, denn auch viele heute editiert man am Laptop und hat eine Software und hat keine Ahnung mehr, also die jüngeren Medien vielleicht, ja. was das für Geräte ja. war. Ja, das ist sehr wichtig, dass du das gesagt hast, weil es ist ein großes Problem, dass eigentlich viele Maschinen gibt es nicht mehr. Mhm. Die Leute, die konnten diese Maschinen bedienen, haben das nicht mehr. Ja. Äh, die, die Akiko ist ein von seltener, aber was ich wichtig sagen würde, ist, diese ganze Zeit, die hat keine Fotografie gemacht. Ich habe keine Fotos von was ich in den USA gesehen ja. habe. Ich habe in den USA zum Beispiel gesehen in äh, Hollywood, weil ich mit vorher mit äh, äh, Koproduktion gearbeitet habe und dann habe ich besucht richtig Hollywood und sie hat in 1987 eine riesige Raum gehabt mit äh, 24 VHS-Kassetten mit einem riesigen System von Schnittmeister, einem Filmschnittmeister, gesteuert hat über ein System, das damals schon aufwendig war und nie mehr geht. Ich dachte, da muss ich irgendwo wieder in diese Studios gehen und fragen, ob überhaupt diese Technik irgendwo zu sehen ist. Ich habe keine Fotos davon gemacht. Dann habe ich erlebt, die Sache, wo die Leute diese erste digitale äh, äh, Maschinen äh, gezeigt hat oder DVDs und ähm, Bildplatten. Zum Beispiel mein Projekt ist auf Bildplatten, das sieht man nicht. Und das Schnittsystem gibt es nicht. Äh, zum Beispiel äh, Stemmeck, äh, was ich als äh, 
steht meistens für Film benutzt habe, war möglich, äh, das ist möglich in, in uh, Museen zu sehen, aber niemand benutzt das. Letzte als ich benutzt habe, war 96 in, in Deutschland. Und Video ist eigentlich viele Maschinen zu sehen. Manche haben einen Keller, aber jetzt muss man diese Videomaschine wieder äh, fit machen. Vielleicht ist das die Universität etwas zu bringen. Ich glaube, sie haben etwas. Aber dann muss man die Leute, die damit gearbeitet haben, wieder bringen, dass sie überhaupt zeigen, wie das war. So, äh, ja. Ja. Und ich komme gerade zurück von einer Konferenz an der Universität in Barcelona unter dem Titel After the Archive. Da, gab, da wurde sogar die These entwickelt, man soll das nicht nachträglich dokumentieren, was ja schon ein großer Schritt ist, da würde man auch dokumentieren, weil das ist ja dein Projekt, also jetzt nachträglich noch zu dokumentieren, was war da am Werk, sondern eigentlich sollen Ausstellungen von Medienkunst schon in der Ausstellung selbst ihre eigene technische Dokumentation mit ausstellen. Das ist eine, eine, eine gewagte These, dass man das nicht immer erst als Gedächtnisakt, als kollektive Erinnerung macht, sondern äh, das soll eigentlich als Produktionsmittel schon mit der Medienkunst selbst ausgestellt werden und nicht erst nachträglich. Ja, das ist auch sehr interessant, weil zum Beispiel mit erster Kamera, dass ich schon 1990 äh, Heiko aus, äh, aus Asien gebracht hat, eine kleine Video 8. Ich hatte von Anfang an unsere Ausstellungen mit Video, nicht mit Foto, mhm. aber Video dokumentiert. Das ist nicht nachträglich, das war gleichzeitig. Das habe ich schon gemacht, das ist alles im Internet. Aber Video war leichter in dieser Zeit zu dokumentieren als Fotos, weil Foto war noch äh, entweder Analogfotos oder erste Digitalfotos, wer weiß, wo die Daten sind und so weiter. Aber das ist sehr interessant, dass Sie jetzt wieder ja. zurückkommen, ja. dass man Dokumentation gleichzeitig, es gab etwas in MIT äh, gesagt, Doku, äh, Demo or die. Das bedeutet, wenn du keine Demo... Und dann habe ich übernommen, Doku or die. Das bedeutet, ich, wenn du nicht dokumentierst, existierst du nicht. Das, das ist ganz wichtig. Ja, wie man. Und ich, das ist schrecklich, dass ich keine Fotos von allen meinen meine Werdegang als Schnittmeisterin in den USA. Ich hatte San Francisco genommen, auch vielleicht der Gefängnis oder keine Ahnung, alle möglichen Bilder, aber nicht technische Sachen. Das war damals noch nicht äh, wichtig, das war nur einzige Sache, das ja. war wenige. Das, äh. ja. Und nun bin ich gespannt auf die weitere Diskussion in Deutsch und gerne auch in Englisch. Wir haben ja das große Privileg. Ah also, ja, uh, yeah, you, you are English, Medien, sorry. Medien, yeah. Medien Künstler, Medienkünstlerinnen selbst yes. hier anwesend zu haben yes. oder im Medium über Zoom anwesend zu haben. And here we have, we have also uh, uh, Monika Schleichmann yeah. and Wolfgang Strauss. Oh, I don't understand. She don't understand, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I knew that you would come, but I was totally in my, my image, <laughs> so I didn't see, so I didn't switch to English, sorry, yeah, yeah. So. okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. May I ask a question? Please, sure. yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, my question is about, well, I wonder if the elaboration of uh, the idea of, uh, I mean, edges of the machine, we are here and machines are very important. I want to ask you if you have an idea, if you, or if you think that there is a strong interaction between ants and I in the process of thinking, and uh, to which extent your action, your operation on the machine as an editor mm -hmm. are uh, largely automatic. Yeah, yeah. That is that's that's very important. Automatic. It's very good, a very good question because yeah, once we were we had a kind of a meeting with your students uh, international and then and I said that uh, it is uh, different of uh, mental perception and mental uh, um, approach uh, with the film that I cut it in 16, six, uh, 35 millimeter physical roles. 
may think that it comes cutting, splicing. This is completely different mental state than when you get in a analog uh, editing, which I never liked <laughs> because it, you cannot quickly just change and cut out and so on, or you have to have this knowledge of uh, of uh, uh, these uh, online machines uh, to be able, or you have to get all this better, worse and worse uh, um, generations and so on. So this mental state, I don't want to remember, <laughs> but I was very fast always, even with that. And then when it came for me, digital, because I had all this experience before, for me, for me it was fantastic. I was free, I was flying, and I, I could really, uh, uh, in both ways. And I can tell you, there is one video, I can give it, there is an online, I can see it, it's called Avant-Garde Robe, <laughs> what Heiko and I did in 99, I think, uh, which is very interesting for this perception. Uh, we went to the huge museum that the artists should do some interventions, and we saw the uh, the garderobe where you had this uh, fecker, you know, like with and so we were having all this camera and, and tripod and we did a lot of that. And then I came, came Final Cut, which had double many layers, possibilities. And I was in two hours. I think it was two or three hours. I was cutting with a lot of layers and two, 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 and the whole bit of and everything and everything. And it was fantastic. And I got came like that. And it's good, but it's not precise. You have to do it all over again. You have to, you know, leave these layers, you can do door. It's not like that, it must be like that. And I tried on the basis of my own video to repeat the same thing. It didn't work. It works, nobody knows. It's still music piece, music visual piece, and everybody loves even composers and so on. It's like contemporary music from this. But I know it was never there, which means as editor, uh, whatever technique it is, you have one space which you are not uh, aware of. It's something about. <laughs> and I think that every artist has something like that. You are not conscious of all what you do. And, and with this software, you suddenly could edit it at home yourself. I, I remember the title of the uh, Cologne uh, mm -hmm. the School of Media Art. Directed by Zygmunt Zelinsky yeah. in the 90s. Uh, in order to do this rendering of virtual spaces, the only chance for students and young artists was to go to an art academy because they had those machines, mm -hmm. those heavy machines like the Silicon Graphics uh, SGI, <laughs> in order to, to do it. Later, it became possible to get this as a software and you could do it at home. And, and suddenly, the art academies were not the media place, the only one. You could do it at home. So, the independence of the artists became much more. Of, oh, of course, fantastic. With fantastic. The project, with project for life yeah, but the question is this time that you need to produce certain things when it's too easy, yeah. it's a question whether it's so good. Uh, now, we, we do with our students. Uh, since Corona, because we had only online uh, lecture, now we are continuing working with uh, 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 smartphones. So they do not only editing, but they also edit, uh, they do with the smartphone. Do I have to turn yes. around? <laughs> like <laughs> that? <laughs> of course, okay. Hello, <laughs> Governor. Uh, so uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, very fast way of possibility of editing and shooting and doing mm -hmm. doesn't bring much. Uh, we try always to tell them think as you have the most expensive material at all and that you have to, every shot that you do, you have to rethink and make position and make that. And when you edit, you know, to slow down because the space when you fast, when you do it with experience is easier, of course, the best thing is that you do everything on your own, with your own, uh, and this home uh, editing for me was, as I said, it was uh, uh, fantastic. But I don't think it's always very good for uh, unexperienced uh, young people who have to learn things. I think it has to be somehow 
uh, slowed down. But on the other hand, there are other, other systems which are bringing more complex things. Yeah. So it's always coming back to that. It's not always so perfect. Any young artists here protesting? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where any of my young yeah. artists here, unfortunately. I think the this so fast, uh, people don't reflect their work. They just do, 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 and don't think about what they do. They don't reflect it. And yeah. I think with your older times, you, 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 you have this time to wait and you have to think your work. And they, they. Well, not only also, think about that, that was very good, but also to uh, keep your uh, mind space. You know, like your certain space uh, uh, to to feel. You don't, you know, like to. So it's different. It should be really for a bis uh, for scientists to research this uh, perception that this uh, uh, thing of. Yeah, that's good news for university because sometimes university is accused of being so. We're <laughs> <laughs> slowing down. It's very moment here. Yeah. We are slowing down. Yes. Yes. Good, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, the idea of one of the ideas of media archaeology is as well slowing it down. For example, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. so complex, so fast, so mm -hmm. parallel processing, everything happens. We, we, we try to open the black box and produce it to some basic slowing down so that we can see what are the elements which are actually uh, yes. developing. That's what, what that's what we do in the signal world. Slowing it down to reflect it more consciously, reduce it to some basic principles which are reflected. That's the function of uh, at least here. In yeah, reality. yeah. On the other hand, I when I look uh, uh, children on, mm -hmm. I think they are different species. <laughs> they are going to be different. They are probably do other things and uh, different. Uh, it's so huge uh, technical change for human uh, being. Then I think they will bring something else, uh, better or worse. I don't. I'm optimist always. I think there is always worse and better. And not all video art was good. It's always the easiest to show the best things, but there are a lot of things which were not so good. So I I believe, but they will be different. They probably will. You can slow down now, but they will be different. They will come and do things. I think in the future are different. And that's a big question. What what this would be. Just a short remark, slowing down, perfect. But today's young generation is uh, slowing high, it means faster it to a level, and slowing is not anymore slow as it was. How would they say? Another that dimension. Mm -hmm. That's also even here. But we have also some uh, uh, some of our so my uh, Matthew Schmidt uh, that we saw her work and uh, uh, where is uh, Johanna Hoffman? Uh, so there are some artists and here Monica and uh, so maybe you want to ask each other something that uh, concerns this interviews because uh, you are here and uh, giving and you know, like specialist. <laughs> Maybe you have become like uh, Johanna Hoffman is also one of video artists. Okay. I, I only want to uh, remind Gavin that he made uh, at least one, or maybe it was two. Do you hear me, David? Yeah, I can hear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it were two um, videos about Arthur's talk, um, where we have a lot of shots from about the machines and people working with the machines. And uh, thank God we were in the beginning of Arthur's talk. We had we always thought, okay, we have to impress people to fund us and to give us money. And, and Gavin was really wonderful in making these videos. And I was just thinking about, we always forgot during making, we discussed for weeks and nights and uh, all these works, you know, they, they took really months and a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and we never documented. No? Yeah. <laughs> it was really stupid. So, but, 
But these, uh, um, our marketing or PR films, videos, that would be, uh, there would be maybe some material for you for showing some of the machines we have at this time. Of, of, uh, anyway, yes, yes. I was more acting with the people because I thought as long as I can yeah, reach so people and then, then yeah, the yeah, of, of, of course. Yeah. That would be very... But also our uh, later when we work with a connection machine. Mm -hmm. Who has a connection machine? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, one is now in the museum in Roma because the museum was helping uh, and financing and helping that it got to the museum. Yeah. That's what you said, I think, about them, that these machines could be either shown and reactivate maybe and see how, how it works. Uh, at least it knows yeah. how difficult it was to do. For <laughs> yes. What do you say, Gavin? Oh, God, too much. Is he talking no, I mean, I, I, Monica is absolutely right. Um, as as a as a as an Englishman, I didn't even speak German uh, uh, really back when we were working together at Artcom, um, and I was already working on my film Psychosis. Uh, Tim Morrison, my, the producer, Gorilla Tapes, was also there, and like the uh, <laughs> they decided uh, Artcom needed an image film. And uh, as Monica just said, you know, I'm like, you know, we discussed the uh, things all, as far as we were concerned as English uh, uh, English guys. We discussed things to death. <laughs> um, we we weren't interested anymore. In the, you know, they were making. We, yeah, but the thing was, like, you know, just just for, as an example, um, uh, Tim and you know, Tim and I were supposed to make this this. Uh, promotional thing for art plus com and um we had a few ideas and but no the whole company the whole association stopped work for about a week to discuss which way it should go and tim and i uh were, we were in a meeting i think Mon monica and dicky were uh Balkan were uh were there too and, and like tim and i just said that one day Oh, sod this! You know, we're going to grab the camera and go out and shoot some stuff and just show, uh, yeah, you know, what we what we mean, because uh, like the discussions were deadly, um, and like our attitude was as much you know creativity comes from play, not not from analysis. <laughs> analysis comes later, you know, when you see what the game is. But yeah, they were great times. It was always well, always great. Have, we should have document. Yeah, no document. <laughs> so concerning concerning languages in the question of machine culture, and those comments maybe example because it was uh, a meeting of people who came out of the Hochschule der Künste of the Art Academy in Berlin and at a time in 1987 and literally met in front of the School, they were finished their diploma, and uh, the in the, for the but this doesn't meant anything for getting job for for example. It was not easy. And then on the other hand, we all in mind 1984, the Apple Revolution, uh, revolutionary uh, promotion clip, and we had the first. Uh, Conclude as a total lack for typewriting. So, but with Art Plus Count, we, we met, and then we wanted to work artist in an artistic way. And the first thing we recognized that this is not the work of one new person and one computer needs much more knowledge. It needs much more knowledge about networking, connecting machines, programming language, and uh, math, physics, computer science. Uh, Psychological um, knowledge, for example, etc., etc. So that was that meant art plus comics. It's communication, art plus com computer or communication. Uh, and the concerning languages, what I want to say for us, it was important to know, uh, yeah, to know we came from the analog world. 
so to say, and to know the to learn and speak with the people from the digital hackers in that case or mathematicians. Uh, so the, the main goal at, the, at that time with this was to build a bridge for understanding each other. And the good thing was there were nearly no tools, and the question of tools there before. Today we have millions, millions of tools, and this makes it easy on, on the one hand, but on the other hand, uh, it was very interesting, I think, one kind of sort of basic understanding in the part of this process of developing these tools, then we later could present our work. So before, before uh, we had to develop the tools before we could uh, build up a work. So it's like a painter mixes his own um, uh, painting material and that doesn't buy it, for example. So that's a big difference to today. The charm for today is that these tools are very cheap and free, and the, and then it's say uh, on the on the quality of the teaching environment uh, because I believe one must find the tool who fits one must find the tool who fits to their uh, um, uh, intentions. That's maybe the trick to. to, to uh, overcome this uh, implosion of the tools, what we had said before, uh, precision was uh, uh, left. Machine culture last point in this art comp studio is that Richard, we wanted the bridge between the analog and digital languages. And on the other hand, it was like a big office called Tom office space office. And in the center of this, was in a uh, place in a, a greenhouse, small greenhouse, the server. So the server at that time today maybe the archive is the most uh, central um, uh, point, but at that time was the server because it connects uh, literally all these different approaches, the graphics, the, the uh, programming things, the networking things, etc. So it was placed in the center of the room and in a glass house. So, yeah. 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 Interesting uh, method. And, and actually, uh, to, nowadays we try, at least here in our little department, to, to find out if it's still possible, like you say, traditional painters mixed, mixed their, their, their colors. And this was a question of learning a bit about technology, we use technology, learning then programming at least, or to work with programmers to mix your own tool. Is this nowadays still possible with this new emerging uh, revolution of uh, aesthetic creativity of AI, artificial neural nets? But it's very complex, but one cannot easily uh, uh, learn just like that to mix your own uh, artificial neural nets. But we are trying to find out, uh, it should be possible, uh, is it still possible? Uh, that's an open question. That, that will be the, some years later, they will look back and ask similar questions like, like, like you now explain to us how you are experiencing. Okay. I think, oh. Oh. I would like to say, say something if that's an okay moment. Hi, first of all, hello everybody. Hello the people who know me. Um, I think the, an important uh, discussion is also access and time, because today you can, everybody has the tools at home at their fingertips, and the difficulty was the scarcity of access. So if you had access to those machines, you had to plan carefully because you could only be there for a certain amount of time. Or as in my case, I chose to work at a company that had these tools so I could work there at nights or on weekends. But that also meant that the material that I had there, I couldn't take it with me. And still today, there's a, there's a lot of material that I can never see because it's not accessible anymore and the machines don't exist. 
And I find it, and we had a lot of collaboration with people who did know the technology. And I find I found the idea very interesting to involve people uh, who actually were the MUDS operators and who were the people who uh, collaborated with us to, to get the, the works done in those days. I think that would be an interesting topic. And I think this was the ironic idea of the uh, Cologne, or still is, of the Cologne uh, Academy of Media Arts to, to bring those production means together with the programmers and the artists to, to have to grant the night time for experiments, uh, which can happen. It's, it's, it's an economy, as you rightly say. It's a, it's a complex economy of this media artistic creation. And it's not the Renaissance singular artist anymore who ingeniously reads and draws sketches. But since so much technology, knowledge, cooperation is involved, that you uh, rather than have to sit in this task. Maybe because we are a bit uh, at the end of our time for this evening, but the uh, can boy, uh, please. Maybe this is just a little comment. I feel that the work that we do now is, is very much in the spirit of what has been done. And that's, I feel like a strong intellectual connection. And I, I found this very interesting. I would also really like to see maybe some sort of confrontation. Other people also talk about their experiences. I, I, I find this very, very, mm -hmm. uh, like, very worthwhile, like this thing. I was I was thinking about this paradox that was also mentioned. There's like there's like a lot of new technologies, a lot of new apps and, and tools, and there's there's a similar paradox like this. There's like gazillions of terabytes of information now out in the internet, but like it feels like human knowledge itself is shrinking or growing. Right? It's, it's, there's this paradoxical relationship between knowledge and information, and it's maybe similar with the technological tools and skills. Something similar is maybe going on. You see people having like less skill but more tools for something. So I, I wonder if we would situate your project the way you document how people have these technological skills and then when they relate to their media environment. So to say. I wonder how this is situated inside of this larger development. Yeah. So then I can already say that in uh, two weeks' time we will reassemble here in the colloquium to discuss the master students work on the question of uh, is there something like a dramaturgy, a dramaturgy of AI generated images? Uh, this will be the updating of this question. So you are invited to attend in two weeks. For tonight, the present people have the privilege we can change just opposite of the street to Oasa Place and have a drink or Oasa hamburger and to the uh, participants in virtual uh, space. We are grateful that you are part of our media theater and make sense of the word media in our theater. <laughs> so thank you very much. But most of all, it's an invaluable, invaluable work which you have started and you have yeah. realized it through all and at the whole uh, life uh, in, in, in a very short time actually. And we are very impressed because you, you, you started, you pushed the movement. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. Thank you so <laughs> Thank you and good night.